Your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, Laureates, and dear international friends. We've all been saddened at the passing on 12th of August of our beloved and respected honorary chairman, Prince Friso. Prince Friso was a humble, intellectual person with a great sense of humor, who much loved the fund and actively contributed to what it is today. We will miss his guidance and his friendship. We're also sad at the sudden death on the 3rd of December of our principal laureate of this year, Ahmed Fouad Negem. Negem was considered a people's poet. In his verse, he voiced the lives and aspirations of the ordinary Egyptians. Speaking truth to power, he was known for his unwavering commitment to the struggle for freedom and freedom and justice. And last week, Nelson Mandela, a man, a great leader, a man who embodied tolerance, peace and reconciliation, also passed away. We mourn their loss, but we find inspiration in their wisdom, their actions and their convictions. Before we continue with this evening's program, can I ask you to stand for a moment of silence and reflection. Thank you.
siendo menores sí, estaban estábamos en la cárcel, en la cárcel sí. Increíble. y entonces cuando salieron cuando lo soltaron entonces ahí se volvieron para bruja exactamente Thank you. 
Victor Gama's 3,000 Rivers is a composition especially commissioned for this ceremony and performed by the Ofaga Ensemble. It is a beautiful example of the creative cultural exchange the Prince Klaus Fund champions. In this case, one that connects Africa to South America and performed by musicians from Angola, Cuba, Capo Verde, and Portugal. 3000 Rivers is the prelude to a much larger multimedia opera told through the stories of people living in the rainforest. Through sounds and video images, you will be carried deep into the rainforest to experience its beauty, but also the urgency of its depletion. The work encapsulates a core belief of the Prince Klaus Fund. Through culture, we can fully engage with and explore a changing world. So, Victor, thank you for making us, in your words, hear the rainforest through nature and people. And there will be more of 3,000 rivers at the close of this ceremony. And now, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you our new chair to the board of the Prince Klaus Fund, Henk Prupper. Henk is a well-known writer, a journalist, and currently director of the publishing house, The Busy Bee. The Busy Bee. And they're very busy at The Busy Bee. Henk was the director of the Dutch Fund for Literature and also the Institut Nederlandais in Paris. I'm very happy that Henk has joined us and is willing to invest his time, his broad experience, and his great energy into the fund. We wish Henk a wonderful time and a wonderful experience at the Prince Klaus Fund. So it is my great pleasure now to invite Henk to welcome you tonight. This is a very dangerous mission, I, I just do. But Your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, distinguished laureates and guests and dear friends, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all warmly to the 17th Prince Klaus Award Ceremony. Your Highnesses, it goes without words that we are very grateful for your hospitality extended to us once more here in the Royal Palace in Amsterdam. I think it is a memorable experience to share with so many people from so many different backgrounds and countries these moments of silence for the three men we commemorate today Prince Friso, our beloved honorary chairman, of course, Nelson Mandela, and our principal laureate, the poet Ahmed Fuad Negem. Welcome to you all for being with us. Thank you so much. Thank you for being expressive with no words, which is, I think, the essence of poetry. And allow me, therefore, to start with some lines of poetry of Negem, expressing by these lines my word of welcome to Mona Anis, the wonderful translator of Ahmed Fuad Negem, who is with us today to receive the principal award out of the hands of Prince Constantin later during the ceremony. I recite some verses out of the poem The Consolations of Poetry, written in 1979. How consoling poetry and singing are at times of hardship. How consoling words and love are in troubled times. We have wandered far from each other 
and we were dispersed. Now we are together in prison. We open doors every day and every day remove obstacles. Every day we are pregnant with new songs. Thinking about these three men, it comes to my mind that there is clearly a wonderful parallel in aspects of their character. Striking to me is that they all three were, are, in their own particular way, clairvoyant men with specific and expressive ideas about what is necessary to create a more just and livable world. All three, at the same time, gifted with a very acute sense of what is real and what is phony, fake hypocrisy. All three blessed with an enormous sense of humor, capable of self-irony, not taking themselves too seriously, which is, I think, the only way to bring minds together, wherever they come from a form of civilized and shared insight in world theater, a form of playfulness, not only with others, but starting with yourself. That is the instrument of which people always understand the different tunes. And that is exactly the formidable spiritual heritage of Prince Klaus. Speaking of heritage, I would like to remind you, among many more, of one of the most important and at the same time spectacular actions of one of our programs this year, the Cultural Emergency Response Program. This program consists of emergency assistance to cultural heritage damaged or threatened by conflict or natural disaster. When militants in Mali threatened to destroy often centuries old manuscripts, 400,000 in total in the city of Timbuktu, the CER, with the help of people from all layers of the people of Timbuktu, worked for three months together to evacuate these manuscripts, manuscripts and naturally, the Malian people is very proud of these often scholarly writings from a period of free thinking going as far back as the 10th century when Timbuktu was an African center of learning and freedom. Together with the families involved, supported by our organizations, and our torchbearers, our fund is now trying to preserve and open these manuscripts for later generations. There's more good news. I have the pleasure to tell you that our last year's laureate, Yassine al Hajj Sake, at the time of the award ceremony last year, living in a hiding place somewhere in Syria, was able to find refuge recently in Turkey. Today, we honor 10 outstanding individuals and organizations who have made an exceptional contribution to culture and development. During this ceremony, we celebrate their creative force and courage, their artistic talent and lucidity. A special word of welcome I would like to extend to the members of the awards committee and thank them for their selection of outstanding nominations this year. It is thanks to them and many other informants that we hear about your achievements and learn from it. Let me finally say a word of thanks to our partners and sponsors bearers and laureates for their dedication to our cause, which is theirs. 
and finish with these verses taken from the poem Mother Egypt of Ahmed Fuad Negem, verses that talk about the power of the word and that show him as a deeply humorous and witty man, evoking very complicated issues in a very accessible way. No wonder that young and old people sing his songs, recite his words, a great example. And our sweet words carried by our greetings hover above the gatherings once more, like a sparrow singing its merriment, dropping songs as if they were seeds, kissing the land which receives them with joy. They blossom, they grow, become songs again, singing, he who built Egypt was a sweet maker. Thank you. I wish you a splendid and really inspiring afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hank, for these inspiring words. Tonight, we will honor 11 cultural pioneers, role models, and change makers. Through a short movie, we'll get a glimpse of their life and their work. The first part of the awards movie will introduce five laureates. This presentation will be followed by a fashion show by one of this year's laureates, Carla Fernandez. Carla is a cultural historian and a fashion designer. With her mobile studio, she travels through Mexico to document and to preserve the rich textile heritage and age-old techniques of Mexico's indigenous communities. She then transforms these into striking contemporary design. The fashion show will be followed by the second part of the awards movie, featuring five more laureates. I'm very excited to present the laureates of this year. Enjoy. to know uh, more about our lives as uh, black lesbians who are living in South Africa. I want people to know that we are here and we're part and parcel of this um, democracy. Our history somewhere, somehow got distorted. I think her work is, for me, very dignified testimonies of courage of pride, of joy, uh, it's, it's blissful. I get an opportunity to showcase work at the gallery. The gallery, which is situated miles away from where the people who are in the photographs are at. When I have exhibitions, I mobilize community members, even those who are not in the pictures to come and see themselves. Zanelli's project, which is both an aesthetic one and an activist one, is to bring to visibility um, the individuals, to bring them to visibility to the public, and at the same time to create a kind of archive document of who these individuals are in their lives. The photos are about women who stare right into your eyes. They are very, very expressive, they're confident, they are very poetic, lyrical images, but yet also quite confrontational. So she does not shy away from being tough. I think they're tough evocations of 
courage and of pride. All I want to see is just beauty. And beauty doesn't mean that you have to smile or show your teeth or try harder. Just be. con los materiales estuvo a través del dibujo que básicamente era una barra de carbón de carboncillo sobre el papel por mucho tiempo digamos trabajé esos dos materiales hasta que me di cuenta de que esos materiales tenían digamos como unos sentidos eh, en su materialidad y que tenían y que transmitían cosas a, eh, a partir de su de su, digamos, su capacidad, digamos, de una cosa sólida convertirse en polvo, ¿no? de, de desmaterializarse de esa manera. Y no solamente en polvo, sino como en imagen, ¿no? Convertirse en imagen. In the culture of drugs-related violence, in the culture of Colombia, as a place with a very troubled recent history. I think Oscar Muñoz has done outstanding work for over 30 years relating to memory and using very beautiful, poetic and lyrical means to relate to a culture of disappearance. Oscar Muñoz has also built a space in Cali, a place that we know from the drugs cartels, from the war on drugs. In this place, he has built a space for cultural encounters, for art, for exchange. And he has brought many artists to come to Cali who would otherwise have never been there. So I think Oscar Muñoz is a very important artist who has been working consistently in a context of disappearances, of violence, of sudden death. understand the ever-changing realities. We try to use our theater to process and to produce knowledge. Theatre Garasi is a major contemporary theatre group in Southeast Asia. They began with ancient mythology. They, they made performances from ancient mythology, but today they are very often reflecting the social realities on the Indonesian streets. They're trying to relate all the time to the young generation and to demonstrate the multiplicities of Indonesian contemporary life. Most of our works were developed directly from our improvisations on the foundings of our research and observations. Observasi di jalan-jalan juga di pinggir-pinggir jalan kami melihat dan merat sepertinya semakin hari dunia semakin bergegas saja.
they are constantly experimental, they're constantly searching, refreshing, and very related to the young people of the metropolis of Asia. They're really a role model for young companies throughout Asia and throughout the world. Tengo una novela. ¿Romántica? Que te ves linda así. Bla, bla, bla. Un error que cometió mi generación fue pensar que recibíamos un legado y pensar que la historia era algo que recibíamos. Hablar de la dictadura no es hablar del pasado. O sea, es, eh, son demasiados los signos eh, en la sociedad chilena actuales eh, que nos remiten a la, a la dictadura. He writes about the middle class in Chile today, which is the class where he comes from, and uh, everything looks easy. Everything looks quiet, the neighborhoods and the lives of the people, but actually this is just on the surface. Underneath you can find the scars and uh, the traumas of living young under dictatorship. So with him, life is never at peace. Love is always uneasy. Uh, trust is a notion that is constantly revisited. Forma de volver a casa es una novela sobre padres e hijos, sobre los años 80 en Chile, sobre el presente en Chile, sobre el proceso de recordar. Y sobre todo, creo yo, es una apuesta por, por la ficción, ¿no? Es una apuesta por. Eh, la idea de que la ficción es una forma de acceder o de intentar acceder a la verdad y no una forma de, de negarla. I think that his books are very relevant to the young generation. He's a rising star and he seems to reflect a kind of a, a generational difference and he's really someone to watch out for. laboratorio móvil de diseño de moda que viaja por todo México visitando a grupos artesanales. Trabajamos principalmente con mujeres indígenas de toda la república que hacen textiles y labores a mano. Llevamos mucho tiempo estudiando el ADN de la indumentaria indígena. Utilizamos los métodos que les son familiares a los artesanos para llegar a los nuevos diseños. I think what's really exceptional in, in her design is the way that she both respects and preserves a very, very particular textile technique, but then brings it into the modern world in very bold and contemporary design. She works in collaboration with indigenous craftswomen across communities in Mexico and ensures that they retain the intellectual property rights to their craft. Nos interesa frenar la extinción de las artesanías mexicanas. Nos interesa también que las artesanas puedan vivir de su trabajo y que no tengan que emigrar a las ciudades en busca de mejores oportunidades. She has created an archive, something that will be useful for future generations, and not just a toolbox for her. And I think that's important because it shows a commitment beyond the immediacy that is often associated with the word fashion.
Cali, 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 Senca Cali, 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 Cali,
llamo Juan Manuel Chávez, más conocido como Baby. Tengo 19 años y toco el chelo. Este chelo está hecho de una lata de aceite, la madera tirada en la basura y las clavijas son de una vieja cuchara para golpear la carne y para hacer el ñoquis. Y suena así. <risa> This beautiful, powerful project. A group of kids create, with the aid of the community, instruments. You would be surprised at the quality of the music that can be made with these instruments. The orchestra of instruments recycled is an orchestra that plays instruments made with waste. A community like Catedra. No es un lugar para tener un violín. De hecho, el violín, un violín cuesta más que su casa. Un, dos, tres. Y mi vida sería sin la música estaría de core y play. Flavio Chavez was the man who started to work uh, with the children on this garbage dump and he saw their daily lives and he wanted to do something beyond just sorting out the garbage, collecting it and making a very small living. And I think if there is one project that illustrates how culture is a basic need, this is it. La gente se da cuenta que no tenemos que tirar la basura muy fácilmente. No tenemos que desechar a las personas muy fácilmente. I started working with a welder and together, you know, we worked on a whole series of armor works, like armor lingerie pieces. These uh, objects kind of were sitting between a space of seduction as well as protection, as well as war, as well as the fact that the body was kind of um, pitched, I suppose, pitched in relationship to the social space around it. Artist Naisa Khan has dealt in her work consistently with issues of gender and its political manifestations. She is interested in the body, the female body, as it relates to space and to public space. She's been based in Karachi for many, many years and she has had an enormous influence on the art scene in Karachi. Art and culture, to bring that to a fore, to make people within this city or this country realize that art has a really, really important function, that cultural activity within a social space is a really part of a basic need, just like healthcare and education. NISA has created a platform of artist residencies for both local artists and international artists. And I find it very impressive because she's opened up this very closed social space of Pakistan. And in that way, I feel like she's bringing in different voices, she's bringing in different influences, and it's so important to open up these public spaces which are closed due to politics or due to religion. And uh, she has been very, very instrumental with her students. Also, she teaches in the university and uh, she's really a role model for young people.
，尤其是米斯雷诺主义奖获奖以后，呃，四十幅作品在网上一公布，那马上引起了这全国、全国人民的关注，或者是一个中央政、中央领导人的关注。所以我拍过了很多地方，中央领导就批示了，他就呃派一些工作组下去进行了调查，解决一些问题。所以后来我在我因为我这些地方经常去，还回访，经常回访的。所以他们当地就反应方向很大。Guanlu's photographs remind us of the prices that we have to had to pay for the rapid urbanization, for rapid economic growth, and how people are caught by this inferno of economic growth. And so, if we do not listen to these human voices, if we do not listen to the pain and to the trauma, we're just going to slip down. I think very often uh, Guang Lu puts himself at risk. I remember how he was uh, dealing with an oil slick in Dalian. And as he's photographing, some of these rescue workers actually slipped into the water and floated away. And even though he was trembling, he still continued to shoot. You have to make it clean and clean. 有些有些地方可能群众反应很强烈的污染，我们去了以后不一定那么强烈，因为我不是靠一天靠一次，而是我会住在那里住他一段时间，或者是我反复的去很多次才来调查这个问题。He does bring in a very strong reminder for me that we need documenters, we need documenters of our time, so that we can remember and we can actually say that this should not happen anymore. In his film Indochina, Traces of a Mother, we see a moving but sensitive portrait of people who are born out of the encounter between two colonized people, Africans and Vietnamese, in the context of the Indochina War. Ben bien sûr que je je pense que ma mère devait ressembler à ces visages que je rencontre, à ces personnes que je rencontre là. What he shows is the way that colonialism brought together very diverse worlds and peoples, and then what happens when those connections are shattered. We come to learn these histories through the personal lives of those who experience them. And who are still trying to come to terms with their effects in the present. Idrisu Morakebai is a leading figure among a younger generation of African filmmakers. <laughs> His second movie, Arlit, shows the disastrous impact of capitalism and industrialization on the environment in the context of Africa. He conveys his stories through fantastic editing and highly and brilliant cinematographic work. I don't think it means anything to be a contemporary artist in a place like this. 
There's no such thing here, right? That's things that people do abroad in foreign countries. Christopher Cozier is a visual artist from Trinidad, and uh, he is challenging with his work the so-called island identity karma because we Caribbean artists are always facing this identity question, who we are. Are we African? Are we English? Are we French? Are we Indians? This is called intellectual worker incarcerated. And it's three options for young aspiring males in the Caribbean space. The intellectual speaking from the podium seems trapped and can't seem to find solutions to the crisis in which a society finds itself. The last one is incarcerated. So it's talking about all the young people you see locked up, going in and out of the prison vans, going to court. And then down below, one plantation owner for every three runaway slaves. So it's talking really about the Caribbean space as a kind of estate. Chris Cozier's commitment to the promotion of Caribbean art and recreation of his identity in the global arena is heroic. And that shows in the project Alice Yard, uh, which is a space that allowed for debate, for cultural reinvention, for dialogue, for discourses, but it's also a place for mentoring younger generation of Caribbean artists. What an impressive display of creativity, excellence, and courage. For the first time in the history of the awards, all these 10 laureates are here with us tonight. This is a dream I've had since I started at the Fund almost three years ago. It is therefore my great personal pleasure to welcome the 2013 Prince Klaus Fund laureates. Would you please stand up? Let's give them a warm applause. Tomorrow, the laureates will present their work in Culture in Action, Daring Encounters Between the Laureates and Dutch Artists and Intellectuals in Debate Center de Bali in Amsterdam. And the orchestra will perform in the BIM House in February of next year. These laureates will receive their awards by the Dutch ambassador in their respective countries in the beginning of next year. And now it is my great honor and privilege to invite to the stage the honorary chairman of the Prince Klaus Fund, His Royal Highness Prince Constantijn. Your Royal Highnesses, distinguished laureates, friends. Um, let's call a spade a spade. This event is full of contradictions. Um, it starts actually when we get into this hall. We uh, give rewards to people that speak up and we get into this hall and there's dead silence. 
And it's always a bit of an uneasy moment. You think, when is the music going to start? But it doesn't. So we sit and we look at each other and we make, us, we, we make it to our place and then the, the real thing starts. Um, we also create steps, steps onto stage. It makes it very difficult to get on stage and also made me understand why models never laugh because they're very scared that they're going to fall off these steps. But the main contradiction obviously in this, in this celebration is that we want to celebrate life and creativity while we find ourselves mourning our heroes. We're looking for hope, but we're coping with the sadness of loss. This is really a strange party. But as experience shows, what passes leaves its traces, deep imprints that we carry with us and that we cherish. Today we pick up the challenge to continue in the legacy of Madiba, Ahmed, Fuad, Negim, and my dear brother Frizo, to draw inspiration from them. And especially we celebrate Ahmed, Fuad, Negim, his work and what he has inspired in others. In reading his poetry and his life history, he seems to have obeyed only his moral compass and belonged to no one but the people he inspired, the freedom he craved, and the words he wrote. He housed in this space between men, religions, and ideologies. He sought out what connected and inspired people and damned what artificially divided us. In this, he was brave and he bore the consequences. To put it in his words, I shall write on my hand with my blood as ink. Oh, my resolve don't fail me. Oh, people, do join in. And when we fulfill our promise, we shall rejoice in the names of those who died young in shelled houses and schools, and those workers buried under the factory's rubble. This is my handwriting, and these are my words. He kept standing as new powers arose and came falling down again, declaiming his verse, which proved more fierce than many weapon standing tall during a life in which many tried to bring him to his knees. His resolve echoed in his words. It be known by all that the injustice has grown old, that the gates of the prison are weak, that the handles of the gates have disappeared. His arsenal of satire, caricature, double meanings and irony never failed to hit its target. He inspired the masses of three generations with his message that indeed a future of peace could exist. And today his words travel the globe beyond his beloved Egypt, where first through Samizad cassette tapes he spread his words. Now the internet and social media connect us with him and therefore connect him with all those seeking justice and those who search for the beauty of his poetry wherever in the world. The Prince Klaus Fund is a pioneering network organization. It has always strived to connect people from different disciplines, cultures and continents. Connectivity is now a given and enabling random encounters and communities of interest. An organization like the Prince Klaus Fund accelerates this and helps grow a community of diversity. Linking geographer, geographer, geogra this is difficult. Linking geo <laughs> geographically disparate people inhabiting different worlds, cultures and economies, working in different sectors and with different media. The rich selection of award winners who are with us today for the first time at the ceremony demonstrate this. 
In taking a deeper look at this outstanding group, it emerges how connected you really are and how much you have in common. Connecting the past and the present, the local and the global, the rural and the mundane. Fiction and reality, art and activism, cultural expression and also commercial application. You're all creators and excelling in a field of expertise, but also crossing over to other disciplines and engaging your publics. You are courageous innovators, critically observing your worlds and participating in it to make a change possible, providing nuance where polarization and banality rules, steering things up where complacency nests. Along the axis of space and time, across socio-economic dimensions, you meet and tell stories about a world, challenging our societies and, and our leaders, questioning our habits and our hypocrisies. This growing network of networks has many powerful nodes and pounding hearts that pump the blood of ideas and freedom throughout the world. One such big heart that has energized a large part of the Arab world has gone to rest, but lives on in his verse and in the people that carry the ink of his blood under their skin. In translation, his words now roam free for all to share, like he sought freedom for himself and his people. Let's pay tribute to the 2013 Prince Klaus Fund main laureate, Ahmed Fuat Negem. We're coming to a special moment. The posthumous presentation of the principal Prince Klaus Award to Ahmed Fouad Negem, represented tonight by Mona Anis, in honor and celebration of his life's work. Mona is a close friend of Negem's. And over the past few months, they were working together on the first serious translation of Negem's poetry into English. And the fruits of this labor have been published by the Prince Klaus Fund, and you all will receive a copy of his poetry translated by Mona Anis tonight. It is my great honor now to invite once again to the stage honorary chairman of the Prince Klaus Fund, Prince Constantine and Mona Anis. Your Excellencies, esteemed guests, good evening. I stand here before you with a very mixed feeling, for it is indeed a very sad moment for me to be standing where Ahmed Fouad Nigm should have been standing had it not been for his sudden death last week. <coughs> it, yet it is also a very moving moment to stand here among you to celebrate 
his works and life. And I thank you all for that. And I'd better go straight forward to the message sent to you all by his family and written by his daughter, Nawara, on behalf of the family. On behalf of Ahmed Fuad Nigm's family, that's myself, my two sisters, and my stepmother, and on behalf of his larger family, all the Egyptians, especially the poor and the disenfranchised, I would like to thank the Prince Klaus Foundation for honoring and celebrating the life and work of my father and all those present today for participating in this celebration. It is very difficult to think of my father, who to me, as well as to millions of Arabs, is a symbol of life, resistance, and resilience as being dead. He who was able to laugh out loud in the face of adversity, especially prison and torture, and to disturb the sleep of dictators. He who was as thin as a thorn and just as difficult. He, the eternal child, is now dead. This is a very strange idea indeed. I've always thought of death as the only real fact of life, but somehow I have never been able to link this fact to my father. Even now, I sometimes feel that my father has been playing some kind of practical joke on us, and that I shall see him at any moment coming through the door, making fun of our sadness and tears. I see him coming forward to ask for the award that we have received on his behalf. Casting a quick look around the elegant awards ceremony, thanking everyone present, and then leaving in a haste to return to his friends in the bohemian circles he loved the most. Perhaps he has played this practical joke on us because he's not able to stand such luxury. I have been telling myself, running away for a short while and then returning, laughing his characteristic childlike laugh and enjoying the fact that he has tricked us all into believing that he is dead. I can still hear him singing, and I still cannot believe that the word can go on without his songs. Being the restless person he was, my father hated sitting down. He was always proud of the fact that at birth he arrived in this world pulled by his feet. Well, he also departed from it standing firmly on his own two feet. Thank you again for honoring my father with this award. Now I shall read one of the, of the poems close to Nigam's heart, which is called The Prison Ward. It was written in 1978 while Nigam was in prison. Ambar kullu yisma, shakshakht bil zahr ma nasafnish wala marra, wa rahint bil mahr wil baqshish ala marra, wa sign lil hur, wa in kan mur wala marra, fakkarni bil tawba, من دي النوبة بالمرة بعد مسائل خير على غفر الليل برنجي وكنجي وشنجي كله لبط ولمنجي بس البدلة بتفرق والعيب على المخزنجي الأولى للنبي والتانية يا أيوب والتالتة غربتي والرابعة المكتوب والخامسة اللي افترى حتما يبان مغلوب الأولى يا نبي يا محرر الإنسان يا بلسم المبتلى يا نجدة الغلبان كرمت صنف البشر عن طيفة الحيوان ورفعت سيف الهدى عالي على الطغيان وزعقت يا أمتي في سائر الأزمان الظلم يوم لو حكم والحق يوم لو هان يحرم عليك المطر والفي والعمران ويجر فيك الحنش وتحوم الغربان ترمي الخراب على الجبل والسهل والوديان النور يغور من السماء وجه الأمر ما يبان والشوف يضيع في العمى والضلمة والأحزان والخوف يتيح في البشر من أسوة السجان 
الناس تخاف بعضها وتخوف السلطان والتاني قلت أنا أيوب أيوب لما ابتلى أيوب صبر له يومين طلعت عليه القصص وتنادى بالإسمين عدوه من الأنبياء والصالحين الاثنين وأنا اللي صبري هنا جوا اللمان صبرين صبري على خطفتي من عزوتي والبين وصبر تاني على حكم الزمان يا عين الندل فينا حكم والندل حكمه شين حكم البقر على البشر بشريعة الأرنين وحق تربة نبي طاها كحيل العين هل بدت يوم يتنصب بدل الميزان اتنين وانظر بعين الرضا للعدل في الميزانين والتالتة غربتي في عالم الأندال الندل فيه احتمى والحر فيه انطال والواطي لما اعتلى أجر له كام طبال الشحط والبلطجي واللص والمحتال ومين يحب النبي سقفة كمان يا عيال الرأس دار في البلد عمال على بطال واللحم لما اتكشف غطى على اللي تقال لا سمعنا صوت في النغم ولا شعر في الموال خنقوا الكلام في الغنى والرنة في الخلقال واحد يا موحد الواحد اتنين يا جد الحسين تلاتة يا سو الشماتة أربعة يا حبر المطبعة خمسة يا عزم يا حي ستة يا بكرة يا جاي سبعة يا قلبي يا مايل تمانية يا شوق الزمايل تسعة يا دنيا يا واسعة عشرة يا خاين يا حشرة أعرفكم جميعا إن السجن سور أعرفكم جميعا إن الفكرة نور وعمر النور ما يعجز يقزح ألف سور وعمر السور ما يقدر يحجز بنت حور وعرفكم جميعا إن الظلم شايخ وعرفكم جميعا باب السجن خايخ وعرفكم جميعا إن ما لهش أكرة وعرفكم جميعا إنه حيبقى ذكرى وبشركم جميعا إن الوعدة بكرة والنور عندنا وعندكم يا حبايب Thank you وانا عيل اما كنت ارجع محبط من بره اروح مرمش حوض نومي واستخبى فيه لما كبرت فوق بقيت شاعر بقيت اعمل الحكايه دي مع مصر اما احبط اجري عليها والبت في حضنها بسم الاله الشعب رب المنبوذين صايم المحروم على مر السنين يا منشدين الحي حي وحينا واحنا هنا على العهد دايما مخلصين احمد فؤاد نجم is simply a giant no ordinary word no ordinary language can convey his impact, his affect, his global reach throughout the Arab world from, the, from Morocco uh, to the Gulf. Nigam's origin from Egyptian peasant roots is sort of the, the fount of his oeuvre. This is where both his poetry comes from and also so much of his always uncompromising being on the side of the downtrodden and oppressed. يا مقربين الفجر نوره ومطلعه مدوا المسامع في المجامع واسمعوا صرخة مغني الحي من جوف العدم 
اتجمعوا 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 It's not just the power of what he says, but it's also the, the vernacular of popular Egyptian colloquial Arabic and the way that he uses it, and uses it with such incredible sharpness and humor uh, that even the powerful, I think, probably find irresistible. He elevated the vernacular. Uh, in comparison to the classical modern Arabic, to a level of aesthetic and poetic that is unmatched among his peers. أغنية حارتنا اللي بتقول حارتنا مجاري وناموس ملاية وفنوس حجارة وكراسي وناس على النواصي دقون على الكروش عرق على القروش وما سأل من النوع فبقوله ل ل أحمد فؤاد نعم بقولهم نعم بتجيب ال الكلام الحلو ده قال لي الله يسمي شيل ما تطلع حواليك دور يا كلام على كيفك دور خلي بلدنا تعوم في النور ارمي الكلمة في بطن الضلمة تهبل سلمة وتولد نور يكشف عبنا ويلهلبنا لسعة في لسعة نهب نصور دور يا كلام على كيفك دور أحمد فؤاد نجم لايف is very colorful and it's a real embodiment of a restless artist who remain committed to his art but it also has a very highly complex life. Across the Middle East, but also in Egypt, uh, I think three generations now know by heart so many of his poems. And especially because they were put to, to song. And now a new generation has been taking up his lyrics and putting them to new forms of, of music. <laughs> Through his collaboration with Sheikh Imam, uh, who is a very well-known balladeer, singer, musician, and a master of road, elevated both of them to a level of folk hero. وشكل شيء لا يقلد يعني مصر يما يا بهيا كم طرحة وجلابية الزمن شاب وانت جباه الإبداع من خلال الموقف أو الوضع السياسي هو إبداع مبني على الفرح الإنساني آه إنك أنت تعطي الإنسان إمكانية من جهة أنه يقدر يحلل الواقع أو يشوف تناقضات الواقع وتبني له العناصر الممكنة إنه يحب الحياة ويعطي لنفسه دافع وطاقة إنه يطلع على المستقبل لحياة أجمل. جاية فوق الصعب ماشية فات عليك ليل ومية واحتمالك هو هو وابتسامتك هي هي تضحكي للصبح I think over five decades, uh, Ahmed Fouad Negam's work has continuously shown in very profound ways how culture is really a basic need. 
أعرفكم جميعا إن السجن صور وأعرفكم جميعا إن الفكرة نور وعمر النور ما يعجز يأزح ألف صور وعمر الصور ما يقدر يحجز بنت حور وعرفكم جميعا إن الظلم شايخ وعرفكم جميعا باب السجن خايخ وعرفكم جميعا إن ملهش أكرة وعرفكم جميعا إنه حيبقى ذكرى وعرفكم جميعا إن الثورة فكرة وبشركم جميعا إن الوعدة بكرة والنور عندنا وعندكم يا حبايب Mm-hmm. 
este es el bambuco viejo, sí. de los viejos que bailaban los viejos. Ellos se, se, se bebían su guarapo, su biche, su biche, y hacían esa rueda. Se ponían ellos a bailar con esas mujeres, y eso era muy bonito, muy bonito. Yo. Ese es muy bonito de este bajo.
your royal highnesses, thank you for the wonderful hospitality you have once again extended to us in this beautiful palace. Mona, thank you for letting us feel the rhythm and power of Negam's poetry. And actually, the poem you read was the poem that he had wanted to read, isn't it? Had he been here. Victor Gama, thank you for 3,000 rivers. And a special thanks to Jezabel Arias Fernandez, Tema Sedo, and the Ofaga Ensemble, Salome Pais Matos, Antonio Tavares, Cesar Gonzalves, Angela Caniero, Isa Peixinho, and Ricardo Santos. I would like to give a heartfelt thanks to the members of the 2013 Awards Committee, Jose Roca, Rima Hamami, Kathleen Mars, Ong Keng Sen, Salah Hassan, under the capable and inspiring chairmanship of Brechtje van der Haak. Again this year, the committee selected remarkable laureates who, through their cultural, artistic and creative endeavors, affect positive change in their societies. I would like to thank the awards team at the Prince Klaus Fund, coordinated by Fariba Derekshani, for all their very hard work in preparation of this year's award ceremony. A special thanks to the team at the Royal Palace, led by Mr. Van Dort, and to Richard Messina and his team for producing this evening. I would also like to thank the models of the House of Orange. <laughs> and a very warm thank you to our torchbearers, private individuals, and there should be a slide in a minute, family foundations and corporations who support our work financially and in kind. Could I have the slide, please? This is also a first in the award ceremony, to have a slide like this. But we're actually very, very happy with all the names and all the logos mentioned on this slide. And the slide is saving you that I am mentioning them all. Without your enthusiasm, expertise and financial support, the fund cannot continue to do its important work. If you're interested in becoming a torchbearer and joining this illustrious group, please don't hesitate to contact anyone with a pink badge or call me later. I would like to also thank the many experts across the world who provide us with advice, second opinions, on projects, nominations, and assistance. I would like to thank all the staff at the Prince Klaus Fund for their dedication, professionalism, and creating a wonderful working atmosphere throughout the year. Finally, I'd like to thank all of you present here tonight for accepting our invitation for the Prince Klaus Award Ceremony. You, this wonderful network, of exceptional artists, intellectuals, and friends are the soul and backbone of the Prince Klaus Fund. I will end with an organizational remark, as usual. May I please request you to allow the royal family, all the laureates, and the press to leave the hall first. So please keep the aisles free until they have all departed. Then I would like to invite you to move to the back of the hall while the chairs are removed to prepare for the reception. And all of us will be back during the reception. Thank you so much and see you at the reception. <laughs>